Do you know what the six levers of systems change are? In this video, we are going to talk about just that. These six levers were identified in an article titled The Waters of Systems Change. So I'll provide the six levers here, give you some examples, and some reflection questions you can use as you consider how these six levers might affect or influence the work you do. If you're interested in diving deeper, I'll also provide a handout for you to download if you join my mailing list. This article argues that if you're interested in doing systems change, you should shift the conditions that hold the problem in place. And these six conditions or levers are policies, practices, resource flows, connections and relationships, power dynamics, and mental models. If you're interested in doing systems change, you should consider how your work fits into these six conditions or levers and how you plan to influence them. Before I jump into examples, I want to give you some reflection questions to consider. These are the sorts of reflection questions you and stakeholders should discuss. First, I recommend you write down the change you are trying to see. So what is the systems change you are trying to have or make happen in the world? The first question I want you to reflect on is how are these levers uh, advantages or supporting the changes you want to see or make happen? On the flip side, I want you to consider the opposite. How are these levers obstacles or challenges to the systems change you want. Then I want you to consider the work you're actually doing. So you're doing activities in order to see a systems change. Which of the levers is the work you're doing specifically trying to influence? And finally, consider how your work might affect or influence any of the other systems change levers. If you want more guidance, remember I created a worksheet to help guide you through these reflection questions. You can download that if you join my mailing list. <laughs> I'm really curious to learn more about the levers you're interested in. So as I go through, I want you to comment below on which lever your work is focusing on. But let's start with policies. Policies are governments, institutions, or um, organizations rules, regulations, and priorities that guide that organization's or entity's um, actions. For example, we might have a policy in our coalition that states that we can only bring healthy snacks to meetings. Practices refers to an institution's and organization's uh, coalition and network's actions. These can be formal procedures or informal shared habits. For example, a practice might be um, whether or not we actually make an effort to have healthy snacks available at meetings. Another example might be whether people actually call out people who bring unhealthy snacks to the meeting. Resource flows refers to how funds, people, information, knowledge, and any other assets like infrastructure are allocated and distributed. For example, a resource flow might be the extent to which there are funds available for us to actually have healthy snacks at our meetings. Another example might be the extent to which we shared the information related to our policy with other people who will be attending our meetings. Relationships and connections refer to the quality of connections actors have within our system, particularly those who might have a different history or differing perspectives. And when I say actors here, I'm referring to individuals, coalitions, um, organizations, and various other entities. In the example we have been using throughout this video, um, the healthy eating policy for meetings, um, 
Connections and relationships might refer to the extent to which our meeting goers know each other and the extent to which they understand each other's perspective on our healthy eating policy. An alternative might be the extent to which the meeting goers have a connection to a source that can provide healthy eating snacks for the meetings. Power dynamics refers to the distribution of decision-making power and authority among the actors in the system. If we go back to our healthy eating policy as an example, a couple ways power dynamics might show themselves here is the extent to which everyone had an equal say as to whether or not there should be a healthy eating policy or healthy eating only snack policy for the meetings. Or did only a few people get to decide? Another way power dynamics might show themselves is, a, is the extent to which influential people abide to our policy. So are the influential people in our um, meeting bringing healthy snacks or are they bringing unhealthy snacks? Mental models are habits of thought. You can think of them as deeply held beliefs, assumptions, or things we take for granted. These are the sorts of things that influence how we think, what we do, and how we talk. If we go back to our healthy eating um, policy at meetings, mental models might show up here as um, the extent to which our meeting goers feel that healthy eating is important or the extent to which um, people feel that having a policy in place that forces people to eat healthy is important. If people don't think that having a policy is a good thing or that eating healthy is a good thing in and of itself, this policy might not work out in the long term. Let me know in the comments below which of these six levers your organization is working on. Remember, these six levers are supposed to work in combination to keep the status quo in place. So if we want to see real change, we have to consider which of these six levers we're going to work at moving and how um, the other levers might be influenced by the work we do. So will they help facilitate our work or will they be obstacles? And if they will be obstacles, how might we mitigate those challenges? Systems change can be pretty hard to grasp. That's why I really like this model because it helped, at least for me, make it slightly more tangible and easier to explain. I'm going to be using this model as I work with some of my clients and I'd love to hear what you thought of it um, and if there's any aspects you want me to clarify even further. Particularly, let me know if you're interested in exploring how this model or framework can be used to evaluate systems change. Don't forget to get your hand out as well.